The following is a pre recorded show. Welcome to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers, certified financial planner professional and founder of Akers Financial Group. Now, helping you win in your retirement, here's Brian Akers. Hello, I'm Brian Akers. Uh, today I have with me certified financial planner practitioner Jeff Akers, and we're both from Akers Financial Group, and we welcome you to Winning in Retirement. Good morning, Jeff. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. How are you doing, Brian? I'm pretty good. So you look pretty good for having over 20 years experience in the in the uh, financial services industry. Uh, you've been doing a good job for our clients for many, many years, and you still have energy to get up and talk like this. And I've known you my whole life. Yeah, so. that, that's that's our parents' <laughs> problems, I'm afraid. Yeah. So this show today is winning in retirement. Yes, you're tuning in to winning in retirement. Um, sometimes it doesn't feel like we're winning when, when markets are volatile and up and down and not quite sure, and yet all these thoughts going through your head. You ever had those thoughts, Jeff? Well, yeah, we all have those kind of thoughts, but we, we just have to understand, yes, markets go up, and yes, markets go down, and we have to have a plan in place and remain steady throughout. All right, so we put the show together called Retire and Stay Retired. This show, today's show, is about retirement, your retirement. You might have just retired or you're, you're thinking about retiring very soon. Of course, you're wondering, can you make it? Are things okay? Should I retire with the market down? These are some of the concerns of listeners just like you. Today, we have a show that is about making these decisions. We will examine what it takes to make your retirement last a lifetime or retire and stay retired. Right. If it's going to last a lifetime, then we want you to retire and stay retired. <laughs> Absolutely. So lots of people want to retire. That's sort of a, it's been the cool thing to do. It's also the something where people are getting close to that age, like, oh, might as well. And uh, a good long-term market makes you feel pretty good about things. And you start to think a few things about the market always going up. Yeah, but if you allow your emotions to dictate what you're going to do, then when the market takes a downturn, you think, oh, this is a terrible time to retire. I can't do it. And so we don't want to be guided by our emotions. We want to have some, there are some basic facts, and we want to plan around those facts and then let the emotions follow. We can't be guided and directed by how we feel. I think you're saying you need to be guided by someone like a guide, like an advisor. Yes, something like that. Oh, absolutely. So, An advisor with a plan. How do you retire and stay retired? Well, when you're retiring, you're thinking about it, and it's going to be your first and hopefully your only time you retire. But if you have a retirement advisor, someone who's worked with many, many hundreds of people and doing this process of getting ready to retire and then staying retired throughout all the years, maybe they have advice that can help. That's right. That, that experience comes in very handy. I can't tell you how many times folks come in and say, well, what about X, Y, or Z? And it's something that I've dealt with 10 times before. So I'll give them an answer and like, oh, I didn't think about that. That's a really good idea. You don't know what you don't know. Um, You can go to a lot of internet sites and you get some information, but there's very few sites that have your name on it. That's right. A good financial plan for retirement will have your name on it. That plan will take an examination of where you are. Now, what do we call that, Jeff? That's your financial fingerprint. That's what we call it. Right. It's a unique financial fingerprint. Each and every one of us has this ability to save and earn money during our lifetime. And we've created this unique financial fingerprint about where we are at this one moment in time. So how do we um, start with that kind of concept? Well, in order to figure out the fingerprint, we ask a lot of questions. So when we meet you, we're going to ask you things about, you know, what do you have in savings and You know, how have you been saving to a 401k or retirement plan, your job where you work? Do you have a pension? That that can be a big part. And it's one of those unique factors in different people's plans. Yeah. So unique financial fingerprint. So a fingerprint, everyone is individual, just like a snowflake. Not saying people are snowflakes, but (laughs) fingerprints and snowflakes are unique. I believe finances are just as unique. Some of us are good savers. Some of us um, spend every dime we get. Uh, some of us have a collection of investments. Some are very organized and active. Not well, probably very few of us are that way, but <laughs> some people um, understand their finances. Some don't. Some put it off to later. Um, but many, many cases, we have where we are. That's just that the known fact is where are you financially? So when you meet someone that comes in new, you're asking these questions, you're beginning. Uh, what's some general information you'd love to know from somebody? 
Well, I want to know some of their goals. You know, okay. we're talking about retirement. Okay, when do you want to retire? Have you thought about that? What do you want your retirement to look like? You know, you've got right. a certain standard of living now. Do you want it to be more travel? Do you want it to be a lower standard of living? That's generally not our goal for you. But I just want to know, what is it that you want? What do I want? I can tell you, Jeff. You can? All right. What so do you want? absolutely want to maintain the same lifestyle, you know? Mm-hmm. That's just a very important piece for um, for when I look at people's retirement or even what I would want them to have is let's maintain the same. Let's eat eat the same. <laughs> make sure the electric bill is paid. Make sure we can do the things that we dreamed and hoped to do. One of the thoughts I have is that people put off to retirement and save a lot of money, and sometimes they sacrifice today to save for retirement. And I'd like to I don't mind that concept as long as they understand where they are now, where they are in the future, and that's a good balance. The longer we wait to get started, the more the balance has to be swayed towards retirement. Right. If you truly want to have a good balanced life where you can spend some money now and later, you got to start early in saving for your retirement. That's the only way to win in retirement, I believe, is let your money work for you. You need that money over time compounding. If you don't save while you're young, later on, you're going to have to save double or triple the amount to try to catch up. Right. The earlier you start, the more time you have for compounding to take effect. And compounding is your friend when we're saving for retirement. It's your enemy if we're talking about debt. But when we're talking about saving for retirement, it is your friend to allow it to compound and grow over time so that when you reach retirement, you have a nice big nest egg to use. And what happens is we hit certain ages and we say, oh, I can retire now. Um, but the reality is you need to take a look at your finances and review all of them and see, can you retire now? Right. If the first time you think about I can retire now is when you turn 62, you need to stop. You might not be able to retire. That's right. You need to stop and we need to figure out where you really are, not just how old you are. Absolutely. So imagine that um, at Acres Financial Group, we specialize in working with people who retire. Just imagine. And we put on a radio show called Winning in Retirement. The ideas of the title of Winning in Retirement is a direct result of working with their clients and helping them win in their retirement. Winning is a different way of looking at things when we talk to different clients. Some clients love to get away. Some clients don't need to get away. They just like knowing everything's taken care of. They like the low stress version of retirement where they don't have to work because all their bills are paid, things are good. Um, They're not worried about the market because they've done the proper balance, the proper allocation. They know where their money's coming from that's reliable and stable. All of these factors are the keys to putting together a retirement plan for you to stay retired. Right. And those folks have the plan, what you were just talking about. You know, they they know where the money's coming from. They know what their bills are and they, they can be taken care of and they don't have to worry about it so that you know, when they get up on Saturday morning or any morning, really, when you're retired, they don't. Their biggest worry is, you know, where am I going to drink my coffee today? You know, they, they just don't have a lot financially to worry about, and that's our goal. It is a true goal for our clients then to have that where, yes, they're retired, and yes, they can stay retired, and they don't have to second guess it. You know, so what happens is this: you're you're in a situ- certain situation when it comes to your finances. Hopefully, good, but if it's not good, um, that's probably normal America. And so what we have to do is say, well, what can we change now? What can we fix now to make things better? Um, I've been thinking about some new clients that have come in, and we take a look at things. And one of them was, I think they're 58 years old. They want to retire at 62. Okay. And so my first response is, why? Why 62? (laughs) Um, And basically tell me about yourself. And then as they talked more and more, they ended up getting into all the different debts that they had. And I said, well, do you have a budget? And they didn't even have a budget. So one of the hardest parts I have when people want to retire is they don't know their own cash flow. They just know if they're in trouble or not. Right. So there are folks that come in and say, I've got everything lined up. Folks that come in and say, oh, things are a mess. And folks that come in and say, I have no idea where I am. Yeah. And if you have no idea, you've got to, to sit down with us and let us figure out a plan for you figure out where you are. That's our starting point. Once we have a starting point, we can make progress towards the positive goals. Yeah. So if, if uh, let me tell you some secrets. When people come in that first meeting, let's say they come in the first meeting and they list, they have a hundred bucks in their checking and maybe a thousand in their savings. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't believe they have a good control over their budget and their retirement. 
What's your first thoughts when you just see that they have no liquid cash? Right. That also means that they're probably in debt and they're, they'll have like credit card. That's what we think of as bad debt. And, and that's because they don't have the savings. So when an emergency occurs, the mechanic says 1200 bucks, which seems to be one of the prices they love to pick right now. Right. Um, uh, the, you have a nail in your tire. That's 1200 bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Light bulb, 1200 bucks. <laughs> so, but that 1200 bucks, you don't have it in the bank, so you have to charge it. And that begins sort of that, that cycle of building the credit card debt. And then you can't pay 1200 off in one month, so you just slowly try to pay it off, and you never quite get there. And next month, something else goes wrong, and there's another 1200 on top of the 1000 that was left over from the first time. Right. So there's this race to retirement that I have with some people where when we evaluate their retirement savings and their pension, and thankfully, a couple of the cases I'm thinking of, they had pensions and other sources of income. All we had to do is make their budget work. Guess what? You can make more money or spend less. One way of spending less in retirement is to get rid of all the debt so you have no payments so that you can have a positive cash flow. So when we talk about retire and stay retired, you got to know what you're retiring on. Very, very important. Right. That spending less, the less debt means you're spending less on interest, which is like a just a wasted kind of payment that's in your budget. Right. The secret, though, if somebody walks in, they have their house paid off, they have um, uh, they have their emergency fund built up, they uh, they know that they pay their credit cards off every month. Those are good habits to be able to reach whatever goals you want. Right. They're getting a head start. So understanding these great habits is really a key so that you can be more relaxed in retirement, knowing that things are taken care of, knowing that you're okay. Financial planning is something where we can put a game plan together, but it's you and your family that's need to work within the game plan for retirement to make it really work so that you can win throughout your retirement years. Yep. All throughout life, there's cash flow, money in, money out. You need to have more coming in than going out. And that's going to stay the same when you get to retirement. If you've got good habits before retirement, then you'll have them during retirement. Absolutely true. Acres Financial Group, we're local, we're independent. We don't report to a big company on Wall Street. We report to you. We have offices in Lutherville and Farstow, Maryland. We have clients all around the state, actually all around the country, and even some around the world. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Go ahead and give us a call for a free consultation with one of our team of advisors. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We will call you back on Monday to schedule a free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Should you organize your finances? You may be surprised at the answer we'll give you in the second quarter. Coming up in two minutes. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. I'm Brian Akers, and here with me today is Vice President of Akers Financial Group, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, Jeff Akers. Uh, Welcome to the second quarter. Thank you very much. Good to be here again. Oh, you made it through one quarter, and here we are in the second quarter. Um, I, I, today's show is called Retire and Stay Retired. We all want that, right? We want to retire and stay retired. We can't wait for that day to retire. And then we think about, oh, I want to stay retired. I don't want to have to go back to work. I want to go back to work if I want to, but not if I have to. So what we did is we put together this show. On um, The show today is trying to address all the issues we see when talking to our clients and listeners that come in. Uh, there's been a lot of talk with a lot of different people over the last couple of months working on retirement. And what we have to tell you is this, is that working out a plan where you might have to work just a little longer so you can retire and stay retired is something that you need to know. And when would be the best time to know it? Well, the answer would be right now. While you have the great job, before you go ahead and let it go and then realize, oh, yeah, I quit the job, Brian. Can I retire? Like, uh, no. <laughs> All right. So this quarter, I'm going to start with, with this question for Jeff. Uh-oh. Should you organize your finances? Should you organize your finances? That's my question to you. I'm going to say for a lot of people, that's intimidating, getting it all organized. So what I'm going to tell you is just gather up statements and whatnot and come see us and we will organize your situation for you and then tell you what your financial situation is, the financial fingerprint. Are you begging for the the people with the little carts with bags full of things to come in and say, this is what I got, I don't know what it is? Is that what you're asking for? Uh, 
Pretty much. I wouldn't call it begging, but <laughs> yeah. yes, pretty much. We just want to know what you have. I, I can't tell you how many times folks come in and they'll have a bag full of stuff and they'll say, well, this is what I've got. And I'll say, well, can I look at it? <laughs> and I'll start going through it and explaining things. Oh, I remember I bought that you know, 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, I've had that for 15 years. And start explaining what they actually have and just seeing the light come on. Yeah. Um, that, I like that. I enjoy that. So, yes, go ahead and bring your stuff. <laughs> well, the reality is this, is if you think about organizing and that intimidates you, hire someone else to organize it for you. And that's what a financial planning advisor and their team of people do, is we take your information, where it, where it is now, however you have it organized, and we bring it together to help get through that, um, this basic information, explain what you have, and that creates our financial fingerprint and where you are currently, and then we build a plan to the future, and then we help you implement that plan. That's the key to what Acres Financial does. We don't have a, a product sitting on the shelf where, oh, this is the answer, we have, a, we have the desire to work through your plan to come up with the answer. It might be that some of the tools you've already bought are things that you have to incorporate into the plan where you don't need to change all your investments. You can keep some the way they are and use them to their fullest capacity. Understanding what you already own is very important. When I think about this answer about organization, I think about one client that said, uh, uh, Brian, I can't come into the office. Uh, you need to come to my house. And I said, okay, well, let me arrange a time to do that. So I came there and he goes, and he points at this room. He goes, it's in there. <laughs> and I said, what do you mean? He goes, uh, all the information you want's in there, but I I haven't been in that room. I just keep putting it in the room. And I'm not kidding you. <laughs> and so this was before I hired Jeff, so a long time ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, 20 some years ago. And so ended up going into the room and started to organize, and I had to bring more people. And through a process of multiple days and multiple hours, we built a financial plan that would work really well and got them up and running to a place where they need to be so they knew where, that they're reaching goals because they have spent their life, their busy life, um, as a high-end executive, worked very hard, but collected money, collected investments, and just put them in there. It basically, if you went to that person, he would put investments with you. <laughs> if you said hello, um, I do investments. Oh, here's some money. Um, because he didn't take time to actually create a plan to invest it and know why he's investing it all together. Right. Folks are very good at their job, and they do a really good job at their job. But then when it comes to their personal finances, that's like that's something on the back burner. And so that's where you want to hire someone who's as good at dealing with your finances as you are at your job, and then let that person take care of it for you, figure out where you are and what to do next. And yeah, there's many cases throughout, throughout the years about people who are extremely successful, and then we take care of the, the financial side for them. Yep. And that's what a financial advisor should be, is someone who's going to be there, trustworthy, someone that they can talk to about their goals, and then we look at what's going on and we say, oh, here's some five things you need to do right now. And then they say, okay, let's do one, three, and five. Um, then we can start with that. Right. Some people love the checklist. You give them a checklist and they won't stop until they're done <laughs> all the way through. Right. Especially after you've done the work of understanding the situation. And so at Acres Finance Group, imagine this. You come and meet with us. It's a free consultation. We talk about what's going on in your life. If you bring statements, it's great. First meeting, you don't have to because we have to have a conversation to see how we'd fit together and understand what we do as financial advisors. Then we want to build the plan. Now, the plan is something we do. It's not you have to do there and calculate numbers. Now, some clients love that. They might have it on a little spreadsheet, and they squeeze it on the one piece of paper. Um, that's the engineers. Yeah, and then we have engineer clients, a bunch of them. But there's a lot of the rest of us really just want it all organized for us and said, well, here's what it, where it is, and this is what you should do next. Boil this down to a page and make it make sense to me. <laughs> I mean, I had this one couple. It's like, uh, we think you ought to do this. The next morning, they had it done. <laughs> they text, they emailed us saying, like, I did all this, then this, what's next? And it's like, okay, and then sort of, we have to look through things and calculate and figure it out. And then we got back to them and did some more stuff. Yeah, People that, awesome. if you want to reach a goal and you get committed to reaching that goal, it's amazing how you can reach the goal right. and how quickly you can reach the goal once you're on track. Yeah, so the first step is figure out where you are. We take care of that for you. And then we start giving you ideas. Here's what to do next. Here's your next step. Mm -hmm. And as you take those steps, you're, you're developing your plan. You're moving through your plan towards retirement. 
Yes, it's, uh, I have a thousand things in my head that I think needs to be said when it comes to organization and understanding. You don't need to track every expense unless you have a very big budget problem. Right. So we're not trying to get you to be on a tight budget unless you have to be. Understand that there's times in life when things are not going well where you need to know where your money's going. I think it's great to know what's automatic, what's coming out of your account every month, and do you really need those things? If you can cut out a few of them and save that money instead, it'd be great. That's right. If sometimes folks, like Brian said, they need to have that uh, a more restrictive kind of budget. But most of the time, if you've got money coming in and there's a little bit going into savings, then we just look for, okay, well, what's one thing that you could eliminate? We can save that money. You know, like Brian said, you find something that's automatically debited from your account that you don't need. You know, we all have those streaming services <laughs> nowadays. You know, there might be one that you never watch. Right. Well, okay, let's get rid of that. And let's save that 10 or 20 bucks a month. I think it's always great once a year to just see where your money's going. Yeah. You might be surprised. Um, you, you signed up for something, you know, that weight loss app, <laughs> yeah. and it was free at first, and then you put a credit card in, and then boom, it shows up a year later. Yeah, it keeps charging. And you're like, well, why is my credit card increasing? <laughs> oh, I don't have time for that. I'll get back to it later. Yeah, yeah. The, I don't have time for it. I'll get back to it later. That's why we're here. Hmm. Let us know. Let us help you uh, figure that kind of stuff out. The reason we do this kind of work for our clients is we want to be able to say to them, yes, you can retire, and you're going to be able to stay retired because we know what your budget is. We know what your goals are, and we have the money in a very balanced way, the least amount of risk way to reach all of those goals. Right. We all have a risk tolerance. You know, how much can we stomach when it comes to risk? And so our job, that's one of the questions or several of the questions actually to get to that, to figure out what you can uh, tolerate when it comes to risk. And we develop a plan that's not going to make your stomach turn every time the, the market goes up or goes down. Uh, we want to have a plan in place that you feel comfortable with uh, going forward and that meet your needs. And so if we need to increase risk a little bit, we tell you about it, tell you why, and tell you what we're going to do in order to achieve your goal of uh, staying retired, financial independence. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nice thing when you're financially independent and you choose to work because you enjoy the work rather than, oh, I have to work because I need that extra dollar to catch up. Pay the bills. Uh, so one of the things you got to do is look at where your money's going. Are you saving properly? Uh, one of the things I want you guys to consider is, are you maxing out the ability to save for retirement? If you have any type of goal to retire early, you need to max out your saving for retirement. So that means a married filing jointly couple that makes under 204000 they ought to maximize that work, what they can put in, mm -hmm. and maximize a Roth. a Roth. That's a lot of money to save, but that's how you can retire early, by putting a lot of money away. Right. Those, it, Like Brian said, it does seem like big numbers, but the earlier and the more that you can save, the better retirement is down the road. Absolutely. In a volatile market, we actually want the market down while we're saving. Now, there's lots of other topics we have. That's why we have a whole show for this, this topic. But when you're thinking about retire and stay retired and you're a little worried about well, what the market's doing, I believe if you know your expenses and you know what you need is the key way to understand that, oh, you have time to let that money come back. You have time to let your stock money grow because it will come back in time. Right. When markets go down, they generally come back up down the road. They, they always have historically. Mm -hmm. And so every market environment presents some opportunities. When markets are really good, that's the time to take some winnings off the table and de-risk some. When markets go down, that might be an opportunity to convert some traditional IRA to Roth IRA, move some money from going to be taxed eventually to now it'll never be taxed again. So Every market has opportunities, but you have to have a plan in order to recognize and embrace those opportunities. All right. So this here in the second quarter, we're talking about organization. Should you get organized? Well, we think you should organize with help. I think the financial advisor help. They have software. They have the ability, like through Acres Financial, we have a website where we do planning, where we organize things there. I think having that organization done by a, a team of advisors, what you're going to get is an end result that is your plan that we can then start to run on and to maintain and grow your money over time. 
because we all know that the best part of retirement is getting your time back, where you decide how to use it. Before retirement, your time is tied up with other commitments, mainly your job. A lot of that goes away at retirement. Your time is now consumed by things that you want to do. It's so easy to begin winning in retirement. Just go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll to the schedule a meeting section and let us know you'd like to schedule your free consultation with one of our team of advisors. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go ahead to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. If you haven't been saving for retirement, you definitely want to hear the third quarter, which is coming up in two minutes. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Thank you, Mr. Announcer. I am Brian Akers, president and founder of Akers Financial Group. And here with me is Jeff Akers. Um, good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Brian. Good Jeff to see Akers, you again. <laughs> certified financial planner practitioner, both of us from Akers Financial Group. And we've been both working at Acres Financial Group since we founded it back in February Ooh, of 2006. 2006. Yep. So what's cool about all this is we are here to help you, and we've helped people retire for many, many years. When it comes to working with your retirement, Acres Financial Group, we want financial planning. Then we implement that plan through actively managed money and through the processes that we go through with our clients. So it's something we've enjoyed doing and we've done for many, many years. Now, the question here on the start to second half is a tough one. So I got to ask, um, was halftime okay for you? Oh, yeah. Halftime was good. Got some uh, orange slices. We're, we're in good shape. You should be stretching, though, shouldn't you? Well, yeah, stretch a little bit. You probably put some ointment on or Ben Gay <laughs> or, or atomic bomb, whatever. I see hot. Old, the old school. <laughs> old school, we put atomic bomb on. That was just pure oh. heat that would eat your skin alive. But <laughs> they made it better since then, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> All right. So here's your question to start the third quarter, Jeff. If you haven't been saving for retirement, you'll want to listen to this. Why would they want to listen to this if they haven't been saving? Well, if you haven't been saving, what are you going to do for retirement? What is your plan? Okay. I, most likely, if you haven't been saving, you don't have a plan. So, Well, if the plan is probably in the future. You want to do it in the future. I guess one of the sad things we have to tell them is that if you're not saving, there's really no one else saving for you. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody cares about your retirement more than you do. Yeah. So you need to take responsib- responsibility for your own retirement, your own savings. And, and the reason we say this is you think about the job you're in right now. If you have a government job, they do have pensions, but they're not the same pensions that they used to be. No. They used to provide 70% of the income or so if you work 30, 35 years. Now, at 30 years, you get 1% of your income, so you might get 30%. And the cost of living adjustment used to be awesome. And now it's like 3% simple interest. So that's one of the ways to save money uh, in pensions, government, private, any of those pensions, is to limit the cost of limit living adjustments. Right. We see more and more companies today uh, that had pensions going to their employees and saying, we're terminating the pension so here are your choices, and going forward, it's not going to accrue anymore. Uh, we have multiple cases like that where um, it's mostly uh, they're all private, of course. But they're canceling their pension, and they're offering lump sums and some options and choices. So we walk through the calculations and all that. But basically, they're trying to take the liability off the books because the liability to the future of funding um, pension plans is very tough. When you think about how much cash flow of a company has to be assigned to provide a pension benefit. Right. The the onus for retirement used to be shared that the individual would save some, the company that he worked for would have a pension, and there would be Social Security. And so it was kind of spread out. The weight was spread out. Well, now uh, the pensions are all but gone in the private sector. And so more and more of that uh, responsibility falls to the individual to take care of it. Social Security, you know, it's still there. Um Benefits may one day be reduced, and so we have to uh, depend on ourselves rather than depending on someone else. 
Right. So if, if you're driving your car or if you're sitting by a game listening to the radio uh, or if you're mowing your yard listening to the radio show, and you're thinking about winning in retirement and you're thinking, well, what makes up my retirement? Well, in cases we've seen recently is they have Social Security, which is 62 to 70 to begin it. That's one component, one fixed piece. Knowing how to handle that, when to draw it, very important decision. And then that second layer that you add on has to do with where you've worked your whole life. Did you work anywhere long enough to get a pension? Typically, to get a good pension, you're going to need to work 20 to 30 years, depending on what is your current job. So that pension would be that second layer. If you do not have a pension, where is that second layer? You're going to have to create that on your own. Right, and so you're going to have to save as much as people that had pensions were putting away for you. And that number is in the 15% of pay range in case you wanted to know. Oh, that, that sounds like a big number. And then you've also got to save beyond that 15% for your part of like the 401k and yeah. whatever else like that was going to be on top of the pension. Yeah, so what happened before, let's say back, back in 1983 is when that's when 401ks began and the idea is you pre-tax, save your money, and that helped companies to um, basically change the process of providing a f- full pension because many of those pensions were underfunded. There wasn't enough money to guarantee it. So one of the things is they tried to get that off the books. They started the 401k. They did a little bit of match trying to encourage people putting money away. The problem is, is that if you maximize your match, most likely it's not enough to retire. If you do the general math of maximizing your match, you're probably going to be short on your retirement goal. And so what happened is that people, um, the companies would say, well, our employees, they're going to save this way. They're going to have Social Security. They're going to have their pension, a little bit of pension, and then they, they need to save 401k or 403b or TSP. And when you add them all up, they'll get to 80, 85% of their pay. But they have to do all of them. Imagine a, a Maryland state teacher. A teacher has a pension. They have their 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 Social Security coming. Most of them don't even think about the TS the TSA the four hundred three B account. Where we encourage any anybody starting in the teaching career to do something through work a four hundred three B or to start a Roth right away and put that six thousand dollars a year into the Roth IRA so you can build up that third component to get you up to where you need to be. Right. And the Roth IRA is awesome in retirement because it comes out tax free. So when it comes to the expenses that you have to pay with the money, you have one less expense in retirement because you're not having to pay tax on that money that you're taking from the Roth IRA to live on. You had to bring tax up, didn't you? I did. It Well, it's a component. There's what two sure things in life, death and taxes. <laughs> Yeah. So it's one of the two. Yeah, so we've been answering the question, if you haven't been saving enough for retirement, one of the ways to catch up is to save in a way that you'll never pay tax again. Being tax-free is a great thing. Also, you got to make decisions about where you retire. Um, in Maryland, well, we do have a, a, new, a new credit um, that started in 2022, and that credit is a tax credit for retirement. Yeah. No matter what you might think it might be, it, what happened is they came up with a law. If you're single and make less than $100,000, you'll get $1,000 off your taxes. Mm-hmm. If you're married filing jointly and you make less than 150000 then you get $1,750 off your taxes as a tax credit. Yep. What is a tax credit, Jeff? So a credit is like tax paid. If your tax for the year is $3,000 and you get a $1,000 tax credit, then that $1,000 is paid and now there's only $2,000 left that you have to pay in, in tax Okay, that you're covering yourself. All right. So this is just part of the taxation for being a retiree where your residency is in Maryland. And retiree, this applies to folks that are 65 and older. Right, but not earlier. doesn't not mean early. whenever you retire. Nope. <laughs> no. yeah, I, I'm amazed by people that want to retire early that they don't realize the incentive is not to retire early. The government does not say you're retired just because you think you are. If you look at tax returns and if you say, well, let me read into the tax returns, what are they trying to tell me? Well, one of the things they're telling you is uh, 65. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and 65 is where you get an extra deduction on federal. 
you actually get in Maryland exemptions against pensions and things like that. Now, for um, police officers and first responders, they have a 55, an, an extra exemption oh, at 15,000. Yeah. But the, there's interesting rules. So as they, they build laws to push for retirement, they do sort of tell us what they want us to do. Yeah, the only law they didn't push that way was letting people take Social Security at 62, because that puts the trigger in everyone's mind that, oh, 62 is when I retire. But the government and everything else doesn't say 62 is when you retire. Right, but 62 is where over 70% of Americans take that option, which I would say more than half of them should not have taken that option. Right, that's a mistake. That's why we need a plan. Yeah. No one to take it. A financial plan needs some time to percolate and get it to work for you and your planning. But sometimes in life that doesn't happen, you know. It's like you're thinking about saving for retirement and and life just happened and there was never enough money. What we have found through our meetings is that we find some money to save. Where we begin with something small, something little, where you just try. One of the battles sometimes is just getting the match, trying to make sure we get up to maximize the match. Because a lot of people are leaving free money on the table. Right. So our first goal is maximize the match. Our second goal is maximize the Roth IRA. And then we go back to the employer plan and save additionally there. Ideally, we can get that maximized too. That's going to give you the best shot at winning in retirement. You must save for your own retirement. And part of that has to be in the stock market. And the reason is, is that to beat inflation over time, you must have an investment that is higher than inflation after tax. That's a real rate of return. Yeah, that's a big number. It's a big number, especially recently. But the idea is this. you In stocks over time, you can, you'll can earn that, but you got to give your money time in the market. Right. And so when you're looking at the market and you're looking at your account, you don't want to see it go down and say, oh, my gosh, I can't take it. I need to get out. That's the wrong, t- the wrong thing to do. We need to ride that out. If you're invested properly, we ride that out to the other side, let the market recover, That's where you make the return that's going to keep up with inflation. So we don't want to get overexcited when things are going well, and we don't want to get over panicked when things are going down in the market. We want to be constant. Yeah, having a plan on where money should go and then allocating it there and then having some cash to buy when things go down is just just a good, good advice for you to try to do. But the hardest part is actually doing it. That's the toughest thing I've found. Yeah, our plan is never sell when the market's down. Yeah. Don't sell something at a loss. <laughs> yeah, well, selling things at a loss might be a good tax thing to do under tax harvesting, but if we're doing that to live off of it, basically what you've done is locked in a loss and you, that you can't recover. You won't be able to experience the bounce back up. Yeah. Don't do it in your IRA. It doesn't <laughs> work. All right, so here in the third quarter, what we've been covering is, covering is if you haven't been saving for retirement, we want you to think about saving now. Put something away. Put more away. If you can go online at your work and raise the amount you're saving, do that while you're thinking about it. Look on your app on your phone. Raise that percentage by one. You probably never notice it. If you can make part of it a Roth, that'd be a great thing to do. Because what you want to do is you want to be able to retire and have it where the stress is not there, where you're worried about your finances. You want the biggest worry of your day to be where you're going to drink your morning cup of coffee, where every day seems like a Saturday free of stress. Your retirement income investments are taken care of by the team of advisors at Acres Financial Group. If this is the future you want, it's not too late. It's easy to begin winning in retirement. Go ahead and meet with one of our team of advisors, a free meeting about you and your retirement. You can call us at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or give us a call at 833-946-7384 to start planning for your retirement now. Should you retire in a down market? We will explain what to do in two minutes right after this break. You're listening to a pre-recorded show. Welcome back to Winning in Retirement. Call 833-WIN-RETIRE now to schedule a visit with Brian and his team and begin winning in retirement. Once again, here's Brian Akers. Hey, welcome to the fourth quarter of Winning in Retirement. I'm your host, Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group. I'm a certified financial planner practitioner uh, since 1991. Oh, yes. <laughs> 
Hey, don't say whoa. Your socks are that old. <laughs> it's not that bad. My socks are that old. Yeah, so with me is Jeff Akers. Um, Jeff Akers, yes, he's a cousin. Um, the cousin? Cousin. Cousin. Yeah, cousin. Our, our fathers are brothers. There you go. And they've been that way since the They're day old, my father was dads. born. Yeah, your dad's whole life, most of my dad's life. Yes, your father's <laughs> older, but I'm older than you. That's true. But you've got more hair. For those listening, you want financial talk, so let's head right back to it. Uh, yes, Winning and Retirement's our show. We have our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. We want you to go check it out there. Check us out there. You go there, one of the tabs is the radio tab where you can listen to past shows. You can listen to this current show. It'll be up on the website very soon. Retire and Stay Retired is our topic for today, and that'll be the title on our website. You can listen to it there, or you can listen to it through Spotify or um, other ways of listening to the radio show. The idea is to understand all the topics that we're covering today and how they come together. If you just tune in, you've missed a lot. You've missed Retire and Stay Retired, and that's why you need to go check us out on our website, acresfinancialgroup.com. All right, Jeff, uh, fourth quarter, it's winning time. we got to finish strong. This um, question for the fourth quarter is, should you retire in a down market? Well, you already threatened me not to read your answer, so. (laughs) Great. My answer's all nicely written out. And so I get to answer this question. Or do you want to just ask me? Okay. Is that easier? Let me ask you, Ryan, should you retire in a down market? I don't know. Let's ask Jeff. (laughs) No, we're not going to do that. What we're going to say is this. If you plan it can always be the right time to retire. If you don't have a plan... It will not be a good time to retire. <laughs> Even so if the market's good. It's as simple as this. If, if you're nervous and scared about the market, you have to wonder what your plan is. Um, do you understand your plan? Do you know where things are? Have you balanced properly to be able to handle downturns? Or are you 100% stock and you're getting ready to retire tomorrow? Then you should worry about should you retire because you've got to redo the numbers. The thing about financial planning and investments is that they come together in that Planning, we want to take the re- the least amount of risk to reach our goal. In stock um, buying and selling and trading, you want to make the most money. The problem is there's a balance that has to happen. Is we need to have our money for providing for our retirement. It should not be a hundred percent at risk, especially when you're facing uh, retirement coming right up. So when we develop a plan for folks, part of our plan is what are we going to live on this year and next year. And let's put that somewhere that there's not a risk of losing it. That way we don't have to sell into a down market. We can hold on and let things recover, and we're going to use that money later on down the road anyway. And we want to have money that's invested, that provides dividends and income. We want things that have guaranteed income that fill the fixed need of every time and income plan. You want to have a plan of where what you're going to turn on, and that just is all part of putting it all together to make it work for you. Right. If you have a nice chunk of money that you're going to use for retirement and you never have to sell at a loss and you're just taking the dividends off of it, that's that that's a good plan. That's a good idea for making retirement last. Right. And that's all part of the plans that we put together for people. So as we've been going through the show today, the topic's been retire and stay retired. Now, if in a down market and you're thinking about, oh, I'm nervous, can I still retire? Well, if you can't experience a 10 or 15 or 20% down market and be ret- and stay retired, then your plan is probably wrong completely. It will happen at some point during your retirement. There are studies done that a 14.5% um, market going down happens every year on average. Yep. So it's normal, fl- uh, normal <laughs> volatility. So if that gives you pause and makes you think, well, I can't retire, then you will never retire. Never retire if you keep going that direction. Right. So the only way is to have a plan that comes up with the answer so you can retire. Yep. Now, some of the hardest plans we've seen are where um, people um, had all kinds of reasons not to save, or every time they saved it, they spent it on something else, and it and it ended up showing back up without being an asset. The money is just gone. Right. Yeah, so we want to have actual savings for retirement, money that you can uh, use. So we have things set up where we can set up automatically, you know, a certain, your retirement check comes, if you will, uh, from one of the accounts we have for you. And if something comes up where you need something in addition, you call and we talk about it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess one of the things about listening to a radio show is you hear um, the opinion and you're like, well, <laughs> I want my answer. I want my, I want my answer. <laughs> I want it my way. You might be yelling at the, at the radio going, but I'm down so much money. I, I can't retire because of that. And then our response is, well, 
the market, when it went up to its peak, that's also an overblown number. You can't plan life on the very high of a stock market. Now, that might be a perfect time when you need to sell and, and diversify into the other lower risk places you need to be. Yeah, but the bottom line is today, market up, market down. Today is the day to give us a call and let us help figure out where you are and develop that plan so that when the time comes for you to retire, it doesn't matter. Is the market up today? Is the market down today? It doesn't matter. Here's the plan, and the plan will work in either case. Absolutely. So we want income to be stable and reliable. We want an income that's going to keep up with inflation over time to give you the raises when you need it. Also, we want the ability to send you some extra money when you need to do something else. Um, that could be a, a trip that you finally get to go on and you'd like to set it up. You might need some money for that. So you give us a call and there's we have a little bit extra on the side for you to, to send to you. Yeah, the vacation fund, if you will. Yeah, well, we, you got to have a goal and a plan to build around that goal. Then also in retirement, you know, there's the there's travel years, and that's when we try to preserve the assets we have as long as we can for people. And then there's more of the unhealthy years where we have to have money for expenses and for taking care of each other and making sure there's enough money for all that. And that's extremely important to know the purpose behind the money you have and make sure it's invested in a way um, to answer all of those possible questions. Yeah, I was just thinking as you were talking about a client that she, uh, <laughs> the market would go down and we'd meet and review and she'd be like, oh, you know, I, I always wanted to, you know, take this trip and there's this opportunity, but I don't know, you know, things are kind of tight. Do I have enough to, to go? And we take a look at her plan and be like, yeah, there's plenty of money right here. Go, yeah. go take the trip, bring back pictures. We like to see those. <laughs> Did she go? Oh well, yeah, she went. It okay. was a. Uh, uh, over to uh, like Israel and Jordan and all that kind okay. of stuff. Yeah, so it worked out very nicely for her and the fact that she actually did go. Mm -hmm. uh, some extreme savers um, never spend money, but then that's not, I wouldn't call that a normal American when it comes to retirement planning. A normal American retirement planning is they don't have enough saved, they don't have enough money to retire. They end up retiring and they're short on their budget from day one. But I enjoy the that joy on someone's face who's been a saver. Yeah. They just save their whole life and don't think they can ever spend anything. And I'll say, spend this, go do something. You know, you want to do this, go do it. You've got the money to do it. And the, the joy on their face when they actually do it. I, I, I like that. <laughs> yeah. So when we think about planning for people's retirement, we want you to retire and stay retired. The key thing is to maximize all aspects of your full retirement plan. You need to have a foundational financial plan where you're covering every topic that we can think of to cover the worst risk that could face you during the retirement years and putting it all into place. And then we start to manage it year by year and we manage the flow of money. We manage the, the taxes. We manage um, the risk level that we're taking. Right. And we do our best. Well, we let you know about all the risks that are out there and we do our best to mitigate the risks that we can and eliminate the ones that we can. Um, but we want to have that, like Brian talked about, that base covered so that then you can just live your life and not worry about, you know, how's the stock market today. Generally, when you're thinking about retirement right now, and if you have pensions or Social Security, we, we believe in 12 years, you're going to be a little short when it comes to keeping up with inflation based on having pensions and Social Security alone. You need to have some other savings, other investments to rely on to help you keep up with inflation in the future. Right. And a lot of pensions nowadays, the private pensions anyway, they don't have a cost of living adjustment at all. So whatever you get in that first month, that's the same payment you're going to get in 20 years if you're still alive. So we need to account for inflation in other ways from your investments. All right. So today's show, we've been trying to put this all together. Uh, and financial planning is just an extremely important topic. And what we began the show I'm talking about was really the unique financial fingerprint, which is where we start with each and every person, right, Jeff? That's the starting point. Figure out where you are, what you have, and how that works for you. By understanding where you are, we then can try to organize, and we offer to help organize, to do a lot of the work it takes to organize your financial plan. And we found out that we can invite Brian over into that secret room in your house where you just stuffed all the, the financial stuff, and he'll go through it. Or he'll send someone to go through it. Yeah, we have people for that. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say it that way. But we, we do help people wherever they are. If it's uh, a few bags, a suitcase, a rolly suitcase, um, uh, plastic bags, whatever kind car. of... 
whatever. Whatever kind of planning we need to do. <laughs> That's right. I, I was trying to think of all the different types of bags people have brought things oh, in. Oh, gosh. I, I remember one case where a fella had a stock that he had had forever and a day, and we tracked down that stock, and it turns out that it had become Enron, and it no longer existed anymore. And he had no idea. He just had the stock. <laughs> yeah, it was Portland Gas and Electric that in the 70s. Great dividend stock. He threw it in the safe and forgot about it. Yep. And, and um, it forgot about him eventually. <laughs> we did an inventory. We said, well, this one's Enron. Yeah. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah, we can get rid of this one. <laughs> All right. And it's also on the show today, we, we talked about how people need to save for retirement that haven't been doing it yet. They need to sign up right now. If you can save more, save more now. If you get a raise, raise your savings. Put that percentage higher. Maximizing your match is not enough to build a retirement that you need when we're saving our money. And then the fact, the last topic was should people retire in a down market? What's your final answer on that, Jeff? When there's a plan in place, retire whenever the plan calls for you to retire. Doesn't matter if the market's up or down. Well, that sounds so nice, Jeff. Sounds like what you wrote. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you gave me all choked up on that one. Uh, well, hopefully what's happening in our show today, if you've, you've got the chance to think about your own retirement. Are you truly thinking about it as, oh, I'm going to retire, and guess what? I'm going to stay retired. I'm going to beat all the odds out there. I'm going to stay retired. Now, at Acres Financial Group, we want you to stay retired. We want you to win in retirement. And to be able to win in retirement, we invite you to take advantage of an opportunity to begin planning with us at Acres Financial Group. To schedule your free meeting with one of our team of advisors, go to our website at acresfinancialgroup.com. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Scroll down to the schedule a meeting section and let us know that you'd like to schedule your free meeting. That's acresfinancialgroup.com. Or you can give us a call at 833-WIN-RETIRE. That's 833-W-I-N-R-E-T-I-R-E. We'll give you a call on Monday to schedule your free in-person or Zoom meeting with one of our team of advisors. Start planning for your retirement now. Go to acresfinancialgroup.com or give us a call at 833 833- 946-7384. Thank you for listening. I'm Brian Akers from Akers Financial Group, and we want you to be winning in retirement. You've been listening to Winning in Retirement with your host, Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group. Brian Akers of Akers Financial Group is a registered representative offering securities through Kalos Capital Incorporated and investment advisory services through Kalos Management Incorporated. Akers Financial Group is not an affiliate or subsidiary of Kalos Capital or Kalos Management and does not provide tax and legal services. Advice given on winning in retirement is general in nature and one should seek further advice from their financial advisor, broker, attorney, or tax accountant before investing. Be sure to read each prospectus carefully to understand all the risks associated with each investment.